गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू लेक्चर फोर ऑन ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड पॉपुलेशन सो इन दास्ट लेक्चर वी स्टडी अबाउट डिफरेंट एट्रीब्यूट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन वी स्टडी अबाउट डिफरेंट ग्रोथ मॉडल्स अबाउट पॉपुलेशन सो वी स्टडी दैट पॉपुलेट टू डिफरेंट मॉडल्स रिगार्डिंग पॉपुलेशन ग्रोथ द फर्स्ट वन वॉज एक्सपोनशियल ग्रोथ मॉडल द सेकेंड वन वॉज लॉजिस्टिक ग्रोथ मॉडल so in today's lecture we will learn about the interactions between the different population and how these interactions affect the evolution and how the evolution in one organism or in one species or in pop or in a, on or in a single population may affect the other population so there are different population interactions that we will talk about today single species populations involve species of similar types interacting and interbreeding within their population so basically we know that in a population organisms of same species that can interact with each other that ha that have the requirement regarding the similar kinds of resources and that those who can interbreed among themselves forms a population for any species however there is a minimal requirement that it requires any other species on which it can feed be it a herbivore or a carnivore for example if we talk about a herbivore we need plant species to feed on while if we talk about carnivores then we need some any other like any other animal species on which the uh, 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 other species uh, like we need any other species on which we can feed so therefore uh, it is not possible that a single population may survive for any species to survive the minimal requirement is feed or the food which it requires for its survival and for that the minimal requirement is that it requires any other species on which it can feed and depending on the different types of interactions that are present uh, that takes place between the individuals or the among the populations among different populations the uh, different population interactions lead to different results even a plant species that makes its own food cannot survive alone for example it needs some soil microbes to break down the organic matter in soil and return the inorganic nutrients for absorption so this is how the cycle goes on so no single species can survive be it a plant species only those who can make those who have the ability to make their own food still they cannot survive alone because these plant species also require organic matter in soil to perform or to survive in order to perform the photosynthesis so these are dependent these are in turn dependent on soil microbes that actually break down the organic matter and therefore they, these organic matter upon decomposition return the inorganic nutrients into the soil that that will be absorbed by the plant and animals plants and microbes cannot live in isolation but they interact in various different ways to form a biological community so in the first lecture also we studied that from starting from an individual organism we move to the population and the interactions between the different populations result in a com biological community so since animals plants microbes these cannot live in isolation and therefore they need to interact with each other therefore the interaction between these organisms and between the uh, between these organisms or between this population leads to the formation of a biological community even if we talk about a minimal community we are very uh, less or we can say like a uh, uh, few number of populations are present there may be uh chances that many interactive linkages may exist although all of them may not be readily apparent so there are various interspecies interactions that is the interactions that involve the uh two different population from two different species so the species not only interact with their own types as we know that for the survival of a population also it has to interact with the both the abiotic and the biotic factors that are present in its vicinity therefore it has to interact with these uh, organisms or these species from different population interspecific interaction or this interaction between different species arise from the interaction of population of two different species so 
uh, basically when two different populations are interacting with each other it is known as the interspecific interactions or it is known as the interspecies interactions now these interactions depending on the how these organisms how different populations interact with each other these interactions may be beneficial for both the populations or for a single population these interactions may be detrimental or these interactions may be neutral like either they may harm the organism either they may have some detrimental effect or uh, like either they may have some detrimental effect by harming the organisms of a population or it may have some beneficial effect over the other population or both the populations may share some benefits or it may have some neutral effect they are uh, like both the organisms they do interact with each other but none of them are either getting neither getting harm nor getting any benefit from each other so the interaction between the different species can be beneficial detrimental or neutral to one to one of the species or to both of the species as in uh, later in the lecture we will get to know so basically later we will get to know in the lecture that uh, what different kinds of beneficial detrimental or neutral interactions occur between these species and how these interactions may be beneficial either for a single species or in some cases may be beneficial for both the species similarly we may find some cases where the interactions are detrimental for a for one species but uh, the uh, beneficial for the other species so different kinds of interactions we will study in today's day. these interactions or associations as i mentioned can negatively positively can either negatively or may positively affect the growth and development of the population depending on the type of interactions or how the presence of pop, uh, spe how the presence of one population is affecting the uh, other population either it is affecting like if it is affecting negatively it may affect the growth and development of the population in a detrimental way or if there is a positive association between both organisms from both the populations maybe it is uh, there maybe it happened that both the populations grow and uh, the number and uh, the development of both the population takes place successfully however uh, i talk about the neutral uh, interactions as well but in natural conditions these types of neutral interactions are very rare in most of the cases either there is a negative effect or a detrimental effect of one type of population over the other or there is a positive effect of the one population over the other so uh, these types of interactions are basically classified either as beneficial detrimental or neutral so the major types of interactions that occur between the organisms of uh, like organisms of different population or the major types of interactions that occurs between the different populations may be classified into the following types so if i talk about species a belonging to population a and if i talk about species b that is population b then there are various kinds of interactions that may happen so the plus sign here represents the beneficial interaction negative sign here represents the harm or the detrimental interaction where uh, there is a loss in the grow, ability to grow or there is a loss in the uh, ability to develop similarly zero here means the neutral where there is neither a positive interact like positive uh, like where there is neither the benefit or uh, no harm to the individual is happening so based on whether the species a or one of the species is getting benefit and the other is getting harm or both the species are getting some benefits from each other or both the species are actually harming each other that is both the species are detrimental for each other or what type of actually uh, what type of interactions is actually taking between the taking place between the organisms of species a and the organisms of species b different types of interactions can be classified as mutualism where organisms from both the species have a mutual interaction that is organisms from both the species are getting benefited from each other 
there are no organisms that get harmed in this type of interaction. The second type of interaction, interaction however, is competition where both the species are actually detrimental for each other and both of them may suffer a loss due to this type of interaction. The third is a predation where one of the species gets the benefit. For example, in this case, it is the predator uh, that gets the benefit while the other species, which is known as prey, is on the verge of loss. The next is the parasit parasitism where species one, which is the parasite, is getting benefited that we will see later in the lecture that how the parasitism or predation works while the other species which is the host on which the parasites live for its food and shelter gets uh, harmed. The next interaction is commensalism which in which one of the species is getting benefit while the other species is neither getting harmed nor getting any benefit from this species A. So in such conditions only one of the species get the benefit while the other species does not suffer any loss or does not have any positive impact over the growth and the development due to this presence of the species A. So in such cases, uh, one of the species gets benefit while, the, uh, while for the other it's a neutral interaction. Similarly, like opposite to commensalism, there is an interaction which is known as amensalism where one of the species is getting harmed. That is, there is a detrimental growth for one of the species while or if I talk about the other species, the other species is neither getting harm nor getting any benefit. So these types of interactions are the major interactions that have that may happen or that takes place between the species or between the organisms of two different populations. And also these type of interactions not only affect the growth and development, but also play a very important role in the uh, course of evolution as in cases as these interactions show the dependency of one organism over the other organism like not only from of one organism over the other but also the organisms of one species over the organisms of other species. Therefore we can say that in most of the cases where host or where both the species are actually mutually dependent on each other either for the benefit or for the uh, like detrimental cause, these species have to evolve, like these species have a have to co-evolve during the course of evolution. So this we will see in different different types of interactions that how uh, these co uh, how these factors play an important role in the survival of the both the species. So firstly uh, we'll uh, I'll give a brief uh, introduction about all these types of interactions. So in mutualism, as I mentioned, both the species benefit and in case of competition, both the species are on the are in the loss. While if I talk about the parasitism and predation, parasitism and predation are the type of interactions where one species gets benefit, for example, parasite and predator respectively from the interaction, while in both the parasitism and predation, the other species is, uh, the interaction is det detrimental or harmful to the other species, uh, that is host and prey. The interaction where one species is benefited and the other is neither benefited nor harmed is called the commensalism. By the interaction where one species is harmed and the other is unaffected is known as the amensalism. Predation, parasitism and commensalism sh share one common characteristic that in order for the predation, parasitism or commensalism to happen, the interacting species must live clo in close association with each other. That is, the species live closely together. That is, the presence of prey and predator should be in the same territory or the parasited host should be uh, living, a co-localizing or similarly for the commensalism. So this par uh, parasitism, predation and commensalism have a one common characteristic that the interacting species live closely together. So firstly, we'll talk about the predation. So in predation, basically it is a natural way of transferring the energy fixed by the plants to a higher tropic levels of the energy. 
so in ecology basically we will also uh, later study about the different types of pyramids so there is one in which there is a transfer of energy so the transfer of energy always takes uh, from the first trophic level to the next higher trophic level and how this happens this actually happens by the uh, predation so predation is actually a natural way of transferring the energy fixed by the plants in the like by the process of photosynthesis to higher trophic levels uh, like for example to herbivores then herbivores transfer it to carnivores and so on so this is a natural way of actually transferring the energy to the higher trophic levels in a actually we can say that each one of is a uh, each one of us are predators because even the herbivores are predating over the for the plants and the carnivores for the carni like the carnivores are the predators for the herbivores so this is how the predation works and in natural scenario this is actually the way of transferring the energy from one from lower trophic levels to the higher trophic levels in the ecological plant besides acting as conduits for energy transfer across the trophic levels predators also play other important roles for example they keep the population under the control this is very important uh, for example if i consider a case of a forest where the rabbit is present and uh, there is absence of tiger so we were found that um, suppose rabbit and tiger exist but uh, in, uh, if a case happens where there is the absence of tiger we were found that they area become overpopulated may become overpopulated with the number of rabbits with the increasing number of rabbits as there is no predator to actually keep the population under control therefore the predators beside acting as the conduits for the energy transfer they actually act they play another important role that is they help in keeping the population under the control but predators are very prudent this predator prey relationship is considered to be very prudent by prudent i mean that predators are so intelligent that they know that if all the prey species die the predators will ultimately die of starvation so predators actually keep the population under control but basically they have to maintain the population of a prey in such a way that their population density does not become so less that they will not be able to that the predators itself will not be able to survive due to the lack of food for them so this prey predator relationship or the predation is actually used for certain biological purposes as well for example when certain exotic species are introduced into a geographical area and in case if they become invasive and start spreading fast because the invaded land does not have its natural predators then in order to keep the population or in order to limit the spreading of that um, in order to limit the spreading of that exotic species in that invaded area we have to introduce the uh, predators so the prickly pear cactus for example which was introduced into the australia in early 1920s that caused the havoc by spreading rapidly into millions of hectares of rangeland finally when the invasive cactus was brought under control this invasive cactus was brought under the control only when a moth that is a cactus feeding predator from its natural habitat was introduced into the country biological control methods therefore adopted in agriculture pest control are based on the ability of the predator to regulate the prey population and this is how we exploit this pre predator prey relationship in order to maintain the uh, population of the prey under the control that allows the uh, uh, invasiveness of any species to be under the control by introducing their natural predator predators besides this also help in maintaining the species diversity in a community they help in reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species so for example in the rocky intertidal communities of the american pacific coast the starfish pisester is an important predator and 
a field experiment was performed where all the starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area. More than 10 species of inter invertebrates become extinct because of the competition between themselves, among themselves. So, in order to keep the interspecific competition or interspecies competition under control, this prey predator relationship plays an important role because this allows to keep uh, to allows it keeps a check on the growth of the population of all the prey species and therefore actually help in reducing the interspecific competition or in maintaining the interspecific competition in a healthy way. If a predator is too efficient and overexploit its prey, then the prey might become extinct and following it definitely as I mentioned that due to the lack of food, the predator will also become extinct. Therefore, pred predators are actually very prudent organisms that know how to keep the population under the control and they know that they have to maintain a certain number of prey population as well so that they do not have to suffer the loss of food. So, prey species, however, have evolved certain defense mechanism to lessen the impact of predation. For example, camouflage. So, some species of insects and frogs are cryptically colored. That is, they camouflage to avoid being detected easily by the predator. The second is being poisonous. So, some species become poisonous and since they contain certain chemicals or they secrete certain chemicals that are actually poisonous, so predators tend to avoid such organism. And uh, for example, if I talk about monarch butterfly, it is highly distasteful to its predator, which is a bird, because of a special chemical that is present in its body. Now, these butterflies actually acquire this chemical during its caterpillar stage by feeding on a poisonous weed. And since after that, uh, since the monarch butterfly taste uh, actually is highly distasteful for its predator, therefore the predator tends to avoid this prey. Beside animals in plants also, the predator predator relationship plays an important role. For example, as I mentioned, for plants, herbivores are the predators. So, nearly 25% of all the insects are known as phytophagus. Phytophagus means these animals or these insects feed on this plant sap and other parts of the plant. So, phyto means plant, phagus means to feed on. So, these insects actually feed on the plant sap and the other materials of the plant, other parts of the plant. So, nearly 25% of the insects are known to be phytophagous. Plants, therefore, similar to, not similar to animals, but in order to avoid this predator, uh, avoid its predator, it has also evolved some dif different kinds of defense mechanism against the herbivores. So, certain morphological and chemical defense mechanisms have been evolved in the plants against the herbivores. The first one, like for if I talk about the morphological uh, defense, those thorns are the most common morphological means of defense. For example, in acacia cactus, thorns actually uh, which are very tricky and uh, it may prickle into the uh, mouth of the predator. Therefore, predators tend to avoid this, avoid eating those plants that contain the thorns, that bear the thorns. The chemical defense may be due to the presence of the chemicals that are that is produced by the plants. So many plants actually produce and store the chemicals that make the herbivores sick. So when they are eaten, inhibit feeding or digestion, disrupt its reproduction or may even kill it. For example, and this has been used in Bt cotton in the production of the bio, uh, cotton in the biotechnology field that allows it to uh, meant, uh, prevent it from its prey. So, for example, if I talk about the wheat calotropis, calotropis produces highly poisonous cardiac glycosides and that is why we, never, we will never find any cattle or goats that browse on these plants because these, because these plants produce highly poisonous uh, cardiac glycosides that may directly lead to the death of the its predator if anyone feeds on that plant. So this is how the plants maintain a certain type like plants maintain variety of morphological and chemical defenses against the herbivores. 
a wide variety of chemical substances that we actually extract from the plants and we use them for the commercial scale like for example nicotine caffeine quinine opium etc they are actually produced by the plants as a part of their defense mechanism and uh, now we as humans have start uh, utilizing those uh, like we have start extracting those uh, chemical substances and then utilizing it on a for a commercial uh, production but these are actually produced by the plants for as a part of their defense mechanism so this was about the prey predator relationship that how predators are important for the eco in maintaining the ecological stability also what are the different kinds of uh, mechanism by which the prey tends to avoid stuff like prey adapts themselves so that they can be avoided by the predator the next type of interaction is the competition which is a negative negative type of interaction where the where both the species get harmed so it is generally believed that so it is generally believed that when um it is generally believed that competition occurs when closely related species compete for the same resources that are limiting but this is not entirely true um uh, because totally unrela unrelated species could also compete for the same resources for for instance if i talk about the shallow south american lakes visiting flamingos and the resident fishes compete for their common food which is the zooplankton for the lake so these two species are actually very unrelated to each other but these could both compete for the same resources secondly resources need not be limiting for competition to occur in interference competition the feeding efficiency of one might be reduced due to the interfering and inhibitory presence of the other species even if the food and space are abundant so even if there is a abundance of food abundance of space if one of the species like the presence of both the species may reduce the feeding efficiency of each other and by interfering or by inhibitory presence of the other species therefore competition is best defined as a process in which the fitness of one species that is measured in terms of the r that is the intrinsic rate of increase is significantly lower in the presence of another species so basically it is actually affecting both the growth and the development of both the species and when the resources are limited the competitively super species obviously the one which has a higher feeding efficiency that uh, that could uh, feed more will actually eliminate the other species but there are certain uh, there are some of the evidences for the competitive exclusion that occur in nature but uh, most of them are always con uh, are always not conclusive if i talk about the examples for competitive exclusion or if i talk about the terms where the feeding efficiency of one is actually affecting the other species so the example may include the abundant tortoise that are present on the galapagos island these become extinct within a decade after the goats were introduced due to their greater browsing efficiency of the Like due to the greater browsing efficiency of the goats, a species um, similarly a species whose distribution is restricted to a small geographical area because of the presence of competitively super species. So when we actually eliminate the competitively super species, the organisms or the species that is actually restricted to that was actually restricted to a small geographical area now can expand its distributional range. and uh, therefore we will see a significant increase in the number of the organisms of species a so a uh, cornell elegant field experiment showed that on rocky sea coast of i scotland the larger and competitively superior barnacal balanus dominates the intertidal area and it actually excludes the smaller barnacal from that zone so the presence of the barnacle balanus dominates the intertidal area and due to its superiority and uh, due to its comp uh, because it is competitively more fit and due to its superiority and due to its superiority the barnacle cathelmus actually faces the exclusion 
in general if i talk about the herbivores and plants so these herbivores and the plants appear to be more adversely affected by the competition than the carnivores so in order to understand the competition between the species and how the uh, how the competition between the different species actually affect the other species uh, uh, Gauss performed an experiment and gave a principle which is known as the Gauss exclusion principle. So the Gauss competitive exclusion principle states that, so he basically performed an experiment using two closely related species of an organism. And that requires the same resources. And what he found or what he concluded in that is that he states that two closely related species that are actually competing for the same resources cannot coexist indef indefinitely. And after a certain period of time, when the resources become limited, the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually. So this is known as the Gauss competition exclusion principle where he found that when two closely related species that needs the same resource or that are competing for the same resource, for example, they may be competing for the same food, they found that these two species cannot coexist for the indefinite period of time. This is because, and this is because obviously the one, as the resource become limited, the one which is competitively inferior will be eliminated eventually and uh, the uh, competitively superior one will be able to survive. So this is how actually uh, what is mentioned in the Darwin's theory of natural selection also that is survival of the fittest. The who is able to eliminate the other will be able to survive better. So this may be true if resources are limiting but not otherwise. Recent studies do not point out that the species facing competition might evolve a mechanism that promotes uh, like uh, faces uh, competition might evolve mechanism that promote coexistence rather than the exclusion. So since competitive exclusion principle or the Gauss exclusion principle suggests that one of the species will get excluded while the competitively superior one will be able to survive, while the recent study suggests that some that in most of the cases instead of exclusion they will promote the coexistence that is both the species will adapt themselves in such a way that both of them can coexist maybe both of them may adopt a different timing of their uh, browsing or maybe they may adapt a different uh, like they may adapt in such a way that they divide the area so resource partitioning may take place so one of the mechanism by which coexistence may take place is the resource partitioning. That is, they may partition the resources in such a way that both the species can exist without harming the other. So, if two species comp compete for the same resources, they could definitely avoid competition by choosing, for instance, different types of feeding and different foraging patterns. This is how they may both coexist by avoiding the competition. MacArthur showed that five closely related species of warbler living on the same tree were able to avoid competition and could coexist due to behavioral differences in their foraging activities. So, recent studies actually point out that cause exclusion principle is not always true. When the resources are limited, there might be the uh, coping mechanism that these organisms will adapt to which is known as the coexistence or the resource partitioning in this resource partitioning basically they may adopt they may have some behavioral differences in their foraging activities or they may uh, adopt some different timings of foraging so that they these species can avoid the competition and can coexist uh, uh, successfully in the same environment have uh, feeding on the same. Next is the commensalism. So, as I mentioned that in commensalism, this is an interaction in which one species benefits while other is neither while the other is neither harmed nor benefited. For example, if 
an orchid growing as an epiphyte on a mango branch the barnacles growing on the back of a whale benefit while neither the mango tree nor the whale drives any apparent benefit so neither they are getting uh, neither the mango tree nor the whale is getting any benefit nor they are getting uh, harmed but the other species that is the orchid that is growing as an epiphyte on a mango tree and the barnacles that are growing on the back of the whale they both get benefit from them similarly we have seen uh, examples of the farms where the uh, cattle aggregate feeds on uh, remains in close association with the grazing cattle and it actually feeds on the ticks and the mites that are uh, that are like it feeds on the uh, insects that are present in the grazing on the surface of the grazing cattle so the grazing cattle is uh, is also it is also an example of commensalism another Another example of commensalism is the interaction between the sea animal that has stinging tentacles and the clownfish that lives with them. So the fish actually gets a protection protection from the predators which stay away from the stinging tentacles. However, the animal does not appear to derive any benefits by hosting the clownfish. So this is how the commensalism works. where the presence of one organism affects the uh, sorry the presence of one organism or when both organisms are living in close association with each other the presence of one is uh, the one species is getting benefit while the other species is neither getting harmed nor benefited the next type of interaction is a parasitism where one of the species is getting where one species is getting benefited while the uh, other species is getting harmed so what is a parasitism parasitism is also a type of predation in which an organism which is called as the parasite it acts, it actually acts as a predator it live it may live on or it may live inside the host organism and the second thing is that it may not kill the host organism directly but the host organism may eventually die due to the negative effects of the parasitism so parasite do not directly kill the host but due to the negative effects like it may uh, be sucking the blood continuously leaving uh, resulting in the deficiency in the host organism so basically this is how the due to the negative effects of the presence of the parasites the host may be Killed, but it does not directly kill the host organism. Just uh, unlike the prey-predator relationship, a parasite receives nourishment and/or shelter from the host, and it is a type of non-mutualistic that where um, one organism is getting benefit while the other is on the loss. So it is a kind of negative relationship between the parasite and the host. association between the parasite and the host can be temporary or permanent that results into a complex infection so as i mentioned that majority of the parasites harm the host they may reduce the survival of the host growth of the host and reproduction of the host and in turn and uh, resulting into the reduction in the population density of the host they might render the host more vulnerable to predation by making it physically weak so this is how the predator actually the parasite actually makes the host weak so it may affect or it may reduce the survival it may reduce the growth and reproduction of the host and resulting into the reduction in the population density of the host so there might be two types of parasites ectoparasites and the endoparasites ecto as the name suggests are the parasites that live or feed on the external surface of the host organism so most familiar example we all know is the lice on humans and ticks on dogs and cattle so these parasites live on the surface of the host organism and suck the blood many marine fishes are infested with ectoparasitic copepods cascota a parasitic plant is commonly found growing on hedge plants has lost its chlorophyll and leaves in the course of evolution and therefore it sucks or it obtain its nutrients from its host plant the second type of parasites are the endoparasites endo means are the ones that live inside the body 
and they may reside inside the different at different sites like liver kidney lungs rbcs etc life cycle of endoparasite is more complex it is, as it has to face different environmental conditions different conditions different physiological conditions that are present inside the host so it may have to face some extreme conditions and therefore it needs some specialization for example the parasites that may affect our gut system have have should have the ability to survive at lower ph so this is why and sometimes to uh, in order to attach with our cells body cells they need some special types of uh, morphological or anatomical uh, specialized features so their morphological and anatomical features are greatly simplified while emphasizing their reproductive potential so they have a very high reproductive potential that is they produce a large number of offsprings while their morphological and anatomical features are very simple for example liver fluke we, we know it lives inside the uh, human body and the next type of parasitism is a brood parasitism brood parasitism means the parasitism for the uh, basically for the uh, uh, where the organism does not is not dependent for the food but it is a fascinating example of parasitism where the parasitic bird actually lays its eggs in the nest of its host and let the host incubate them so due to the similar morphological features of both the parasite and the host the uh, brood parasitism is possible where the brood parasites that is the birds that parasitic birds lay their eggs in the nest of the host and since host do, did not have any idea whether it is incubating its own egg or the parasites egg it actually let the brood parasite let the host to incubate their eggs and during the course of evolution the eggs of the parasitic birds have evolved to resemble the host egg in size and color to reduce the chances of the host bird detecting the foreign eggs and ejecting them from the nest so this is how brood parasitism work so brood parasitism is very common in uh, quail and uh, crows where the crow actually lay the eggs in the nest of the uh, host that is in the nest of the quail sorry where the quail actually lays the egg in the nest of the crow and due to the similarity in the size and the colors of the egg and uh, uh, the host is not able to identify the foreign eggs and result in the uh, incubate incubating them the next type of interaction is the mutualism so till now we have studied different types of interactions like parasitism we have studied commensalism we have studied a uh, prey predator relationship the next one is the mutualism so in mutualism the interaction confers benefits on both the interacting species so it is a very positive kind of interaction in which both the species are getting benefit from each other so one may be getting the space the other may be getting the food for its survival so lichens that are present in an intimate mutualistic relationship between a lichens are the best example that represent an intimate mutualistic relationship between a fungus and the photosynthesizing algae which is known as the cyanobacteria so this fungus and cyanobacteria remain in close association in mutualist mutual uh, interaction with each other where the fungus actually provides the space and cyanobacteria actually provides the food so this is how lichens that re uh, represents an intimate mutualistic relationship between the fungus and cyanobacteria another kind of another example of mutual relationship is mycorrhiza and this is these are also associations between the fungi and the roots of the higher plants so these fungus the fungus that is present in the mycorrhiza helps the plant in the absorption of essential nutrients from the soil while the plants in turn provides the fungi with high yielding carbohydrates so this is how the mutualism work where both the species are getting benefited from each other one of the important feature for mutualism is the co evolution so plant animal interactions often involve co evolution of the mutualist that is 
if i talk about the evolution of the flower and uh, its pollinator species uh, the flower and its pollinator species are tightly linked with one another so if one of the species evolve it may affect the survival of the other species so in order to both the species to survive they both have to co evolve with each other else the evolution of one will actually affect the growth of both the organism so in many species of fig trees there is a tight one to one relationship with the pollinator species of wasps it means that if a given fig species can be uh, that it means that a given fig species can be pollinated only by its partner wasp species and no other species so in such cases this is a very tight relationship and if one of the like if either of the species like fig or wasp get evolved the other species either have to co evolve or both the species will suffer the loss so the female wasp use the fruit not only as an oviposition that is an egg laying site but also uses the developing seeds within the fruit for nourishing its larva so in that case if there is some changes in the shape or the structure of the fig uh, species flowers of the fig species it may affect the site for the egg laying or the development of the egg of the wasp as well and in turn if wasp is not able to and the wasp may not be able to pollinate the pollin do pollination for the fig species the wasp pollinates the fig inflorescence while searching for suitable egg laying sites in return for the favor of pollination the fig offers the wasp some of its developing seeds as food for the developing wasp larvae the mediterranean orchid of virus employs a sexual deceit to get pollination done by a species of bee so basically what it does is this sexual deceit means uh, it actually affect like it actually uh, perform some of the activities like it has a mechanism by which it has one of the petal of the flowers bears a resemblance to the female of the bee in the size color and markings so what happens is that the male bee approaches this plant approaches this orchid in or uh, by co considering them to be a female bee so when they come in close association with the ophirus and uh, considering them to be a female bee this actually helps them uh, this actually helps this orchid into the pollination by the species by the uh, bee so one of its so how it sexually deceived the organism how it sexually deceived the bees uh, one of its petal flowers pe one petal of its flowers bears this resemblance to the female of female of the bee in size color and markings and the male bee is attracted to what it perceives as a female and actually it is not a copulate but a pseudo copulate with the flower so when it pseudo copulates with the flower during the process of pseudo copulation the uh, it results in the dusting of the pollen and uh, pollen gets attached to the surface of the bee and when the same bee pseudo copulates with another flowers this is how the pollination or the transfer of pollination may takes place so these are uh, basically this is known as the sexual deceit and uh, that happens by the process which is known as the pseudo copulation so these are the different kinds of infections we study today so these infections may involve mutualism positive positive parasitism positive negative commensalism positive zero then we have competition negative negative and then we have prey predator that is positive negative where one of the species is getting benefit while the other is getting harmed but all of these interactions as we study today we get to know that all of these interactions are, have a very important role in maintaining the ecological stability these interactions are very critical in order to transfer energy from one level to another level or in order to maintain the population of one species to uh, one is in order to maintain the uh, population of a species in under control or 
for the process of evolution so from the process of evolution from the point of evolution point of view we can see that how different species have actually have to co evolve in order for their in order if they want to survive or because of the processes which are like mutualism where they both have a strong tight dependency over the uh, over one another especially in the cases where only one type of species is actually having a mutual relationship with having a tight mutual relationship with the other type of species so such kind of mutation uh, such kind of uh, relationship actually help in co evolution and competition tells us about the survival of the fittest the one which is fit over the other will be able to survive and will be able to uh, survive in the long run and will be able to eliminate its competition so this is how different types of interactions takes place between the organisms and the uh, populations of different species so this was all about today's lecture in the next lecture we will start with the next topic and with this we end with the organisms and population thank you for attending today's lecture